Thank you. Hello, and welcome to Perfectly Good Podcast, the only podcast on the internet that is counting down every John Hyatt song from A to Z. I am one of your hosts, Jesse Jackson, and joining me in the passenger seat is my wonderful co-host, Sylvan Groth. Sylvan, how are you doing? I'm so excited to be starting this journey. You know, the thousand mile journey that starts with a single step, the 300 plus song journey that starts with Aces Up Your Sleeve. Yes. Really so yes, this is our official our format is this is the first official episode we're going to we'll be playing with this format so we ask you in advance to give us a little grace um have a little faith in us but we will get through this um and uh at the end of the podcast we'll tell you how to reach us to give us feedback and to actually join us to discuss an episode but as always we're going to start with the basic facts so sylvan tell us a little about this song well aces up your sleeve uh, appeared on the Eclipse Sessions. And before that, as often is the case, it showed up on a couple of bootlegs and also in some live performances that didn't get recorded. So I believe this song was written sometimes in the early 2010s. I think the earliest recording I have heard about was about 2016. It was officially recorded August 18th, 2017. And then the album was released October of 2018. And that's actually pretty unusual for John because he has described himself as on a clip where he will put out an album at least every two years, often more like 14 months, 18 months. So there was this nice big break that uh, Terms of My Surrender, which came out in July, 2014, had over four years before we Hyatt heads were eagerly awaiting the next album, the Eclipse Sessions, which is also a rare one that it does not have a title track, but it was recorded during the Eclipse, which we probably all remember. John talked about this, that he was kind of saying that he used to really worry if he couldn't get recording right away, if he couldn't write a song right away. And he mentioned that he went two years without writing anything and he wasn't worried about it. And I got to say that uh, this song is a perfect example of just um, how amazing a songwriter he is. This one really kind of blew me away the first time I heard it live because it is poetic. It's a beautiful melody. Um, also, if you hear one of those early live versions and then you hear the uh, full band version, you can see that there's really some thought taken into really very delicate instrumentation with a really powerful impact. So that's me fanning out on how much I love this song. Jesse, what do you think about it? One of the things that we talked about when I had Skip Sherman on the podcast is when you hear about the other podcasts, I do a Bruce Springsteen podcast and we had done a John Hyatt month, which is kind of how this kind of started. He talked about that a lot of times that trilogies around bring the family, we go a lot. And at times I don't spend as much time with the new albums. I mm -hmm. just doing other things. So I had not spent a lot of time with this since we knew this was going to starting. I really like this song. It's a very mellow song. It is, it, I think it shows John's voice and this kind of, uh, he says with a whisper on have a little faith in me, but there is this kind of gentleness to this and this kind of big money and big dreams. When we lived there, you kept a pair of aces up your sleeve. As we're discussing our relationship and discussing what we're doing, the idea of that I keep something in my back pocket, right? I, I've got something mm -hmm. in the sock drawer and to have it says with aces up your sleeve is a very clever way to share that how you've kind of kept something in reserve for us. Absolutely. Cards are such a great metaphor in writing and uh, poetry too. I did a little bit of research because I'm not a poker player. I don't know what a pair of aces would actually do. But a couple of things that I came across, if we can get into that now, is that uh, 
The probability of picking up pocket aces is once every 22 hands. And that if you have pocket aces, you've got an 80% favorable against all other pocket pairs. So that, that kind of puts in perspective, if uh, you happen to be cheating with aces up your sleeve, yes, you've got uh, a very good chance of winning. And uh, what's kind of interesting when you put that in perspective of the song is it also reminded me of your other podcast and the Mary question right? of we could ask ourselves, where is this couple now? Because he definitely sounds like he's talking about someone he said goodbye to a long time ago, but I don't think it's definitive that way. You know, is he talking about the, the, early stage of a remote romance and, you know, wondering where that kind of optimism went in the person that he's still sitting across from, or is he talking about someone who has long wandered off? And uh, it's also kind of really interesting that like, to me, maybe it's because I've read so much about John's biography. I hear this and it, the couple is very much set in the seventies for me, it seems like a wistful past remembering, but there's nothing to indicate that he's talking about something that happened that long ago. You know, I, I don't know if Indiana Avenue is supposed to be Nashville. It's supposed to be somewhere out in California where John lived at one point. I actually did a little Google map searching and Indiana Avenue exists in Nashville, but it's this like teeny strip molly kind of area that does okay. not fit with the imagery of this song so i don't think indiana avenue is nashville it could just be that he needed those uh vowels and that number of syllables because you know it's yeah. john he'll fit things in where he needs to um but yeah i mean it it, it to me it just it really is a beautiful love song, but it's definitely one of those rare love songs that it's like, well, I don't really want to be the couple in this love song because it doesn't sound like they're particularly happy now. Yeah. Well, and, you know, you talk about poker and the other thing is with cards is magic and sleight of mm -hmm. hand. And it says, you know, it's the perfect sleight of hand. I've driven to the darkness by the promise I will see again. The queen of hearts has shown her face. She wants you to believe you were never meant to have aces up your sleeve. So I think that goes to your thought of, is this a relationship in the past where right. it did not work out the way uh, that because fate or whoever, you know, talking about Juice Newton's, you know, queen of hearts, that was this Cupid, was the whoever is in charge of romance, was it not set to be? And he's he's he could be the the singer could be mourning that loss of that relationship. Right. Those last two lines, you were never meant to have aces up your sleeve, are repeated, which is also pretty rare for uh, John to do in a song. So I think he's definitely saying there's something important in the message here. Um, which, you know, does that mean you were never meant to cheat? Does that mean you were never meant to be lucky? Does that mean, I don't know what else it could possibly mean. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the softness of the music, um, mm -hmm. I find this a very captivating song. I am sucked into that, this world that is, you know, sometimes, when someone's telling a story, they'll lower their voice just a little, and it kind of makes you lean forward just a little bit more to pay attention. Exactly. And I, I get that feeling from this song. This is just, we all love when we're, he's, he's blaring it out and we've got that electric guitars and he's doing his gravel, but to have this kind of quietness really captivates me. Yeah. And it's inviting that confidence that, that we're in this secret, quiet, uh, private moment and story. Yeah. Um, and to that end, I think the real power of it, because it really feels like a heartbeat is actually the drum. 
And we've got Kenny Blevins on this, who is the goners. Uh, he, you know, he's the one who's uh, banging like Charlie Watts yes. in a uh, slow turning. So he can really bring the power to a drums. And there's just that every, I don't know how many beats because I'm not a musician, right? but it just feels like a, a, a punctuation mark on John's laments each time of like, I'm going to say something devastating and then you're going to take a breath boom with that drum beat. And it's so moving. I love it. I did not realize that he was from Lake Charles, Louisiana. And mm -hmm. I now want to, I want to contact him so bad because um, that's where I grew up in Lake Charles, Louisiana is where I graduated high school. And so now then Kenny, if you're listening to this, join me. I want you on my podcast. We want you on this one. We want you on uh set lusting Bruce. So we can talk about playing music in Lake Charles. So yes. And uh, Kenny, I, I promise I won't eat any more of your chocolate. I will send you chocolate. If you come on our podcast. Oh, so. uh, there has to be a story there that I think, um, uh, <laughs> yeah that that's you the story <laughs> okay that's it you hate his chocolate one of the things that i love about john is similar to what i love about bruce what i love about harry chapin is the stories they tell stories you are captured into their world and they are telling you and i know based on our um our previous discussions that one of the first things that drew you to to John's music was how autobiographical it was. That when you connected, like, wait a minute, he has this seven little Indians, and then all of a sudden there's seven siblings, and this, you know, their combination of that. So, yeah. So you know, he also goes to great lengths to say that all of his songs are fiction, which yes. Uh, I don't know if I always buy. Mm -hmm. And this song is really interesting that it feels like it could be a hundred percent fictionally, or it could be just a kind of veiled uh, version of a really important story of a, a moment in his life when he's driving down Indiana Avenue and coming to some kind of realization about someone. And we don't know who that someone is. Yeah. And that kind of yeah. drives me crazy, but uh, it's a kind of crazy that I really like to experience. So, yeah. So, and I do love the idea that he's setting it up that, you know, I live south of town and, and, mm -hmm. you know, that's the wrong side of the tracks versus, you know, the north side of town. That's where all the, you know, as he says, the big money and big dreams, which once again leads to, are they still together? It, if you look at it that way, they probably aren't. But was is this because she's moved on to someone else? Has she um, has she passed? You know, and she's gone on to a different plane. Uh, and I think part of the beauty is you don't know that you get to fill in the lines of the story in your mind of what this is, and so that it can speak to you. I absolutely agree. Yeah. And that's what poetry is, you know, yeah. that we see ourselves in it. And then we also um, see infinite possibilities mm -hmm. in what we're reading. And yeah, I mean, it, it's just his lyrics at their finest that, you know, I'm driven through the darkness by the promise I will see again that, uh, you know, um, he, he uses that light and dark and finding hope uh, so often in so many songs. And um, I, I really like that he is in the driver's seat for this one. He's not just waiting for the dawn. He's just pushing himself through those uh, black nights with the promise that he will see again. Who's making the promise? Is it him to himself? Is it this woman that, you know, he believes is his salvation? We don't know. It doesn't matter. And um, then it all comes back to you were never meant to have aces up your sleeve that, you know, you were never meant to cheat. You were never meant to be lucky. I, I don't know, but it, it still to me sounds like um, he's he's continuing to go on and that's the happiness. You know, it's almost like um, 
Camus and we must believe that Sisyphus is happy that he's going to keep on driving down that dark boulevard, but he's still going to find that, uh, the promise. Yeah. And that I, was really pretentious. But. No, it wasn't at all. And there is a, there is, um, forgive us listeners. Um, it is going to be hard for me to go through an episode without mentioning Bruce Springsteen. So if we are making a perfectly good podcast drinking game, Bruce saying, Jesse saying, Bruce, take a drink. Um, but there is a thing where he says, we go through the night. We, you know, go through the dark because that's where the delight is, right? We are going through that darkness to reach the light. And this is, is, I, I love that line. I'm driven to the darkness by the promise I will see again. And that is a line that and I'm going to sound pretentious too, but someone fighting cancer or in economic problems or in a unhealthy relationship, you can fight. I'm driven to the darkness by the promise I will see again. You know, we, we, one of the cliches in business is, oh, there's light at the end of the tunnel. We just hope it's not a train coming our way. Um, But that is a bet. That is a sweeter way to say driven to the darkness by the promise I will see again versus there's light at the end of the tunnel. And, and I agree with you. I, I'm so glad you brought up that like lyric because I think it is something really um, inspiring and, and the idea very, as John often does, very poetic. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Any other and, thoughts um, on this song? I don't think so. It's just, uh, is it time to rate? And, yes. you know, how should we define our rating? Yeah, so we haven't done that yet. I no, think. so I, I think we're going to go scale one to five, five being a Hall of Fame song, one being a song that I would think you tend to skip if you're if it's on your playlist, you're like, oh, I'll listen to that one later. Do you want to go first? You want me to go first? I'll go first. Okay. I, I'm, I'm willing to give this a solid four. OK, you know, and if it was written by anyone else but John Hyatt, it would be a five. OK, it, it's an amazing song it is a perfectly good even better than perfectly good song but we're talking about john hyatt here that yeah. he has such masterpieces that we have to leave room for the five stars um from some others and you know i almost feel like this is the one that i'm gonna have to eat some crow and to say yeah i was completely wrong it should have been a five star i don't know what i was thinking but no i i think we're in sync i would go with a four two i think it is a wonderfully it speaks to me i i love that the slow burn of the song that it Mm. it is it is a comfortable song and uh so i definitely agree it's it's four stars something that i'm i'm really glad we got to start with such a strong song you know because sometimes you're gonna go well i don't have much to say about this one so (laughs) yeah that is great i think this is an episode and good job we got it done our first one Okay, and everyone agree, disagree? Come yes. and talk to us. Yeah, the, the couple ways to reach us. One, we are on Twitter at perfectly good p perfectly good podcast. It is perfectly good pd on Twitter. Uh, we are on uh, Gmail, perfectly good podcast at gmail.com. I am personally on Twitter at Jesse Jackson DFW. You can reach me there. I I'm on Twitter at Sylvan Green Eyes and I'm uh, Sylvan Groth on Facebook. And maybe we can even come up with a uh, Facebook page for the pod. I, can do I that. think that is a great idea. That is a wonderful idea. So yeah, uh, let us know what you think. What are we talking about next time? Next time we're going to be going to Little Village for some action. Great. Very nice. All right. Well, we will see you in a week. Thank you, Sylvan. Thank you, listeners. Uh, you, Jesse. Have a little faith, everyone. Have a little faith, everyone. Absolutely. Goodbye. Bye. Baby, we can come on home.